Today is fuel tank day. Now, there's nothing wrong with the instructions that AK su uh, supply, but I'm not confident that five fixings going through three millimeter um, steel is gonna hold the weight of 50 liters. Of course it, it will, and it'd be absolutely fine, but I just like to double up. So what I'm gonna do is utilize uh, the holes that AK have made in these tabs, and then I'm going to be uh, drilling another hole in each one and uh, going up into the frame and making sure that I've got two bolts on each of these flanges holding it in. So basically a total of 10 th uh, threaded bolts. Okay, so prepare your trolley jack um, with some protective uh, cardboard, etc. So you can put your fuel tank on there and then raise it up into position. So I've just used some plastic spacers there to make sure it's absolutely central and, and square. And now I'm going to uh, get underneath and just mark out where my new holes uh, are going to be in each of the tabs. And then we can uh, lower this out and drill out those extra holes. And then I'll raise the uh, fuel tank back up into space, into, into the place, and use a center punch to, um, a sprung center punch, so nothing moves too much, no hammering involved, uh, to mark the position of the 10 holes that I need to drill. So that's all done, uh, doubled up on all the bolts, uh, all tapped, all nicely put in there. And uh, I've just got that extra peace of mind that I've got uh, five extra threads holding in the, uh, the fuel tank when it's got a, a weight of petrol in there. So fuel tank uh, installed, let's have a look, see what we need for running the fuel lines with particular regards to uh, an LS3 engine. First job is to switch out the paper filter get a paper filter in uh, this fuel filter and uh, the pump uh, pulls through so much fuel that it will just deform and crush these uh, these paper filters. So you need to replace it with a high flow metal, metal filter. Uh, bear in mind, don't put it round, uh, don't insert it the wrong way round. If you put it in the wrong way round, then it will completely seal it and uh, fuel won't be able to be pulled through it. So make sure you replace that. I'm gonna do that and concentrate in a second. Uh, direction of flow, uh, this kind of pointy uh, end um, means the fuel goes that way, all right? Uh, next up, you've got the fuel pump. Uh, you can tell the direction of flow if you just uh, take off this, just slide off this little rubber jacket here, which is for shock absorption and a bit of uh, noise deadening as well. Uh, you can see there's an arrow on here suggesting the flow is this way, uh, towards the terminals, if you like. And you need to um, make sure you've got the correct fittings. I'm using some 10 mil uh, braided uh, brake hose here. So I've got the correct fittings on here and a whole range of fittings that I can put onto my fuel pump so that it all connects up. Uh, also got some brackets to, to mount the fuel filter. These just clip on. So they'll be mounted to the chassis and uh, the fuel filter will just clip on. And I've got a bracket here for the fuel pump, which I'm just going to uh, trim down because space is at a premium, as I'll show you in a second, uh, to where you can put this. So let's have a look at where it all goes. Now I've decided to use a slightly different system to mount my fuel pump. Um, and that's because I wasn't sure that uh, this bracket here and, and the flange was going to um, clear the uh, drive shaft when it's finally fitted, or more importantly, the actual uh, gearbox itself. Um, there's many different types of bracket you can buy. Uh, a lot of brackets actually have the mounting uh, parts this way up, and you're, the problem you'll find there is that um, there isn't actually enough width on the frame to fit both both um, mounting holes. So I've gone for P-clips. These are 62 mil P-clips, uh, nice and tight, nice and firm. Um, there is at least one manufacturer of fuel pumps that sells the P-clips uh, with the fuel pump. So I know it's a recognized way of fitting it. Um, I just tapped some holes here and uh, I think that's a much better solution. Uh, there's very minimal um, jutting out here uh, for uh, where the gearbox is going to go and um, you can obviously adjust it at a later date if you need to. You could drill some more holes higher or lower down um, and uh, hopefully you'll have the the space there to fit everything. Just to give you a bit of a guide, I guess the um, 
the shaft is is about this thick it's going to come out uh, from the from the diff here it actually comes up in a slightly raised angle and should well clear um, uh, the the fuel pump here um, the knuckle is slightly thicker but I think the knuckle actually finishes about here so it's going to be it's going to be well clear of uh, the fuel pump so really uh, what you need to be concerned about is the actual gearbox itself it's got a couple of um, uh, fixing fixing uh, brackets at the bottom uh, you know it's all it's all a cast single piece um, but hopefully that is a good position to fit it and just so you know where you can just see an indentation there on the frame and uh, and just a couple of inches back from that and this is based on my previous build uh, which cleared everything so hopefully that's good I fitted the fuel filter here at a slight angle just so that the hose that's coming out the back and going off to the fuel tank is in its downward tra trajectory and there's not too much of a, a kink or anything as it goes underneath the diff there um, and I think I think that will be absolutely fine You'll have to experiment with your preferred way of cutting through braided hose. Um, I prefer this method. Uh, you wrap some masking tape uh, really, really tightly uh, around where you want to do the cut. And then I'm going to use a multi-tool. It seems to vibrate so fast and, go, and just go through fairly cleanly. And it doesn't leave too much of a, a jagged mess at, at, uh, at the end. So that is what I'm going to do there. Let's just see if we can do this. Okay, and there is there is the uh, end of the end of the hose there. Um, it's pretty good actually. By the time you got um, a hose finisher on there. I think that is, uh, it's not snagged or pulled too much like a hacksaw might. And I think that is a pretty, a pretty good solution. I could have just done a couple more wraps there actually of, uh, of masking tape just to make sure it didn't all come off. But uh, this is the end I want. So that, that will do me just fine. And there we go, with the masking tape removed, these ends are absolutely perfect. You, you can see it hasn't snagged too much or started undoing the braiding uh, too far. And I think that's a good solution. And the other benefit of a multi-tool is because there isn't a lot of movement in the actual tool um, that you're holding, you can actually do it uh, in situ uh, with the engine in the in the engine bay, where you just got to shorten a pipe to the uh, to, to the fixings, etc. You can just get your multi-tool in there and make a nice clean cut. Remember, do it the masking tape as tight as possible. Okay, so the fuel pipes are in. Let me show you the run that I've taken and how I fixed them. First of all, the connections to the fuel tank. Uh, they're quite long sprouts coming out of the fuel tank, so I've doubled up on the uh, on the clips there. Uh, and then the pipes go underneath the diff uh, on the on a Gen 2 model. Uh, these pipes are held up um, by this diff cover, so they're well supported there, which you fix later. Fuel pipe to the engine, then comes through to the filter, and then to the fuel pump, and then it goes onto the engine. Okay, so the fuel pipe will come from the fuel pump up to here and then it will enter a, a T uh, section, a T piece, uh, whereas ongoing will curve around into the engine fuel rails and the other, the T section will go across the top of the bulkhead and it will go across to the fuel pressure regulator into this pipe here. And then the return pipe will attach to the bottom of the regulator and return back to the fuel tank. So that's it from the fuel system for now. Next up is the engine and gearbox install. See you again.